And unfortunately, it is not a great day for wrestling. We lost uh, a couple of legends this week. Uh, earlier in the week, we lost uh, La Parker, who uh, is... Technically, we have to clarify. It. What? Was the original La Parker. We have to clarify, clarify it wasn't the original La Parker. They, yeah, this was La Parker Jr., the second La Parker. Uh, the man who, not the guy we know today is L.A. Park. Uh, this was the man who uh, assumed the, uh, the La Parker gimmick. Uh, he was also known as La Parker Jr. Um... And uh, uh, his name was uh, uh, Jesus Escabosa. Um, and his his death actually came from uh, it actually happened. It's been building, unfortunately, from an unfortunate botched. Coincidentally, unfortunately, named Suicide Dive back in October uh, that left him paralyzed. Um, and that, over the last few months, he's just been suffering and uh, died from, passed away from lung and uh, kidney failure due to that. And could you maybe tell us what La Parker meant to pro wrestling? Because, you know, I'm not a big WCW guy, uh, but, like, I know who La Parker was. It's like, I distinctly remember the chair that little Jakey used to do. Yes. La Parker was known as the chairman of WCW. He always carried a chair with him used it as a guitar on his way to the ring, danced with it, despite never actually really using it in the ring. Uh, for those of you who are who might not know the name, you'll know the costume because it was a giant skeleton costume, uh, a, a, a Dios de los Muertos, Day of the Dead type skeleton costume. And Perhaps the most infamous moment of La Parca's career doesn't actually involve La Parca himself, but the time La Parca actually defeated Randy Savage on an episode of Nitro, only to take off his mask and reveal that he was in fact Diamond Dallas Page underneath. I mean, people should so, have known La the difference. <laughs> they should have known the difference, right? Just in stature. Yes. I mean, but, but La Parca was also, so he wasn't the typical cruiserweight. In fact, I don't think he was actually within the actual cruiserweight limit. He was, you know, part of the, you know, luchadors that, that, that were big, like the, uh, like the, like the Vianos, uh, like Silver King, uh, like, like, you know, like, Conan and, uh, Wait, there's a misconception that, um, luchadors are, uh, Rey Mysterio size, but, in all honesty, they come in all shapes and sizes. And, make no mistake, La Parca could, could do a lot of stuff in the ring, and, of course, we're talking about the original L.A. Park. Us as fans, James and I, we didn't re we didn't really get to see this incarnation of La Parca, La Parca Jr. because he this happened after L.A. Park was you know long long gone from you know any cameras and whatnot and he was he mostly this La Parca, La Parca Jr. was mostly a staple of Lucha Libre AAA. And, well, I mean, 
you know, I don't the, know if it's a curse the, with with them. You know, the first time I ever saw the park, uh, uh, the first time I ever saw um, uh, Pentagon Junior, I assumed that he was Lepaka or a new voice, a new gimmick of Lepaka. So still to this day, kind of, um, you know, um, Lepaka's legacy lives on. And yeah, yeah. That, that's 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 a very interesting connection. Well, yeah, because I didn't know who Pentagon Junior was the first time I ever saw him wrestle, so it was like, isn't that Lepaka? <laughs> well, uh, funny enough, Pentagon Junior has faced off against both. This La Parka and L.A. Park. Interesting. Uh, he faced uh, back in 2012. He faced uh, Pentagon Junior faced off with uh, La Parka Octagon Octagon Junior in a uh, six man tag match. Uh, and believe it or not, uh, in October of 2018, on an episode of MLW Fusion, which Unfortunately, I don't have that one on my uh, DVR anymore. He actually wrestled L.A. Park on American TV. That is really interesting. Maybe somebody will go down, uh, go on their Google machine and try and type that in. I think I might do that oh, as well. I, <laughs> I, I, I've got the match pulled up right now. Uh, I, I, of course, it's the... Um, it's the whole episode of MLW Fusion. So, I have to see where that, uh, where that match would be, how far in. And, uh, uh, around the same time, we lost a Japanese le uh, legend as well. Yes, we, uh, Kendo. Lost yep. Kendo Nagasaki. Yep. Uh, best known for his time competing in the uh, NWA and WWC, uh, Kazuo Sakurada, uh, unfortunately, uh, died due to pacemaker failure leading to cardiac arrest. He was the second man to perform the Kendo Nagasaki gimmick. Ironic that we lost two wrestlers portraying the second incarnation of a gimmick. Uh, he was second man to portray Kendo Nagasaki following the British wrestler Peter Thornley, who is the one who would portray Kendo Nagasaki in the WWF. There's a specific show from Japan uh, that the WWE did, I, 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 I want to say it's with all Japan. I don't think it's FMW. Not sure, but it had Jim Duggan against that Kendo Nagasaki. But, uh, but this Nagasaki, uh, did not compete under a mask like his American counterpart. He wrestled in face paint, similar to the great Muda. Uh. Credited by Bret Hart as one of his trainers, uh, Sakurada's career included notable runs in Stampede Wrestling, uh, the World, Wrestle Ca World Wrestling Council, Frontier Martial Arts, the NWA, the Continental Wrestling Association, and World Championship Wrestling. Uh, went back to uh, 19, uh, Japan in 1990, remained there until his retirement in 2001. Uh, in addition to being Kendo Nagasaki, some WCW fans might remember Sakurada as a member of Gary Hart's JTEX Corporation, aka Gary Hart International, uh, where he competed under the name Dragon Master uh, and was part of the six man tag main event at the 10th Clash of the Champions. And. Um... Damn, that's a lot of, that's a complete history on this guy. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. And probably the most notable um, on Wednesday, um, watching um, somebody really wants to get a hold of me. Um, <laughs> oh, most notably, I was watching NXT casually, and uh, the show started, and it was announced that Rocky Johnson died uh, unexpectedly. Yes. Um, yeah. probably the maybe the most well known out of all the deaths uh we've had this this week. Yeah, we um we learned of it over the remix uh about twenty minutes before we went on the air, and uh, needless to say, that was really, really, uh, really shocking, considering um. That it was that it was just it was so unexpected. Like he he wasn't in he wasn't in he wasn't in failing failing health as far as I could tell. I knew he had some a couple of like issues, but it didn't seem like it was there was anything that was gonna you know lead to, you know, a sudden passing, but... Right. And... Can you maybe elaborate what Rocky Johnson meant to the wrestling business? Now, out of all the people we have lost, Rocky Johnson probably means more to uh, pro wrestling than a lot of people. Because... Rocky Johnson was the uh, first, one of the first uh, African American wrestlers to you know, blaze the way. You know, he was the he was the, the feel good guy. He was the soul man. He's a, you know he's also the father of the Rock. You know, um, I mean the best wrestler. One of the best wrestlers of all time came from his loins. Yep. Uh, they, uh, he, he was, uh... Did I just... Did, did I just no, no. lose your train of thought? No, I was... I was looking for, um... more, uh... more news on it, and... I came across a uh, roadblock. Uh, you know, Johnson, uh, believe it or not, wow. His actual name was Wade Bowles. Oh, no. What the? Wait, don't. What the no, hell? That, that was, no, that was the start of a, uh, of CNN's uh, re- uh, look at the life of Rocky Johnson. Dude, if we get sued, I'm blaming you. Hey, it was less than ten seconds. I All can't right. do anything. All right. Uh, he uh, j- joined the WWE in the '60s. Uh, he found his mo- most of his success when he teamed with Tony Atlas. Uh, in 1983, they made history, becoming the first African American World Tag Team Champions in WWE's history. Uh. Rocky Johnson is actually credited with having retired, believe it or not, in 1991. Really? Um, yeah, imagine if, you know, because Tony Atlas was trying to make a WWE comeback at the time. Right. We could have gotten a uh, a Soul Patrol 2.0 in the, uh, you know, in the rock and wrestling uh, days. Uh... I mean, in 2008, he was inducted into the Hall of Fame by, of course, none other than his father. Um, they are uh, uh, in a movie uh, attentively titled The Ring King about the life of Rocky Johnson is being produced. Well, I think that came. Uh, can, that's coming out conveniently, don't you think? 
Uh, well, it's in production, and and they're they're it's in you know, yeah they're writing it right now. They, yeah, but it was in it was in you know back in, it was that was announced back in 2018. So. Oh. And of course, all our thoughts and prayers are with the families of all these uh of all the people that were lost this week. Um, oh. now to get out of the bad stuff. Get into something maybe good, maybe interesting. I would definitely like your take on it. Uh, Tessa Blanchard won the Impact World Championship, the men's version. Yep, but is that tainted by what's going on with her outside of the ring? Exactly, because that kind of came out of worse time, but um, taking all of that away, forgetting about all those controversies, should a woman hold the men's World Heavyweight Championship? I believe yes. I think there could come a, there could come a time where you know, it, 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 it it can't be man against woman. However, I don't think Tessa Blanchard was given this for any specific reason or achievement. I think this was really done as a publicity stunt. Huh. I mean, not to, not to take away anything from Tessa Blanchard in the ring, but if you, I, and I hate to say this, but the idea of somebody taking the Impact Championship from Sammy Callahan, and Ms. Callahan, he, she took it from, right? Yeah. That honestly, it could have been any female superstar. You're there, saying what, it's I mean, like a copy and paste. Yeah, there, there was, there was no reason to really be invested in it, other than the fact that it was a woman challenging for the, you know, the the top belt of a company. It, it, there was no other reason to get involved emotionally in the fact that it was Tessa Blanchard. Well, I mean, they they did have a rivalry. Uh... They've had a rivalry since like August of last year, so they did build on some type of uh, rivalry that they did have. But I could understand where you're coming from. But you know, you said it's not any merit or achievement she gained. But do you think that she actually nope. deserves it? Does does she deserve it specifically? Yeah. I I can't I can't honestly say that she does. I mean you know, we all we know about Tessa Blanchard aside you know I mean how many consistent impact fans are there that have, you know, kept up on the you know this whole story and it, it kept up on impact in general because it's you know it's impact is a it's a company that's on the brink I and mean they just kicked, got ticked off Twitch for apparently something RVD and his girlfriend did yeah Katie Katie Forbes, uh, <laughs> just, uh, can't control that, uh, that behind of hers. I mean, who could? Um, but, I mean, she, she was, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, it was the <laughs> it was the sex between Rob Van Dam 
and his uh and and, and Katie Forbes. Uh I mean it's uh, one thing to get kicked off a a, a a a network station. It's another one getting kicked off a video game world platform thing. I can't really I really don't know what to call Twitch. <laughs> but that's a new loaf for them, yeah. isn't it? The social media streaming platform, uh, yeah, yeah. but the fact that he was having a essentially a three way, and he was supposed to believe that two women, including Forbes, his wife, and this other woman, were performing sexual acts. You don't actually see the sexual acts; they're implied, but the women are from what we can only see apparently are topless and or naked. Uh, but yeah, um, uh, yeah. I mean, they just be, that goes back to impact trying to make you know news for the sake of making news, so that they can you know it, it's it's almost like. They're trying to go, hey, look at us. We gave a woman our top title. We're progressive. We're, you know, we're edgy. We're with the times. We're me too. And it's just, it's it's just, it's not working. Right. I mean, anything to be relevant at this moment, right? Yep. 